Okay, so continuing from our video on alkanes, part two, we will be looking at isomers. So we already looked at alkanes and how to, and how to name the alkanes. So now we are going to look at a phenomenon known as isomerism. So an isomer is when you have two or more compounds with the same molecular formula but the arrangement of the atoms in the compound is different. So remember, the molecular formula tells you the amount of atoms that you have in the compound. What it does not show is the arrangement. The formula that shows the arrangement is called the, is called the what? Remember, it is called the display or the structural formula. So this is the formula that shows the arrangement of the atoms. The molecular formula on the other hand tells you the amount. So the molecular formula for example C4H10 it just tells you that it has four carbons and ten hydrogens. It does not tell you how the atoms are arranged. So the four carbon atoms can be arranged differently and that is where the isomer comes in. The compounds will have been four carbons and ten hydrogen. How they are arranged, we will have to see. But once they are arranged differently with the same amount of atoms, then we have isomers. So for example, let's do a compound with four carbons. So these represent our carbon atoms, as you, may, as you may remember from the previous videos. So here we have a compound with four carbon atoms. I'm going to make a next compound with four carbon atoms again. So the question now is, Are these two compounds the same? Both of them have four carbon atoms. Are they the same? So from organic chemistry, if you have four carbon atoms and it's an alkane, we know it is butane. One of these compounds, the four carbons are, co are connected to each other in one continuous direction. So in one of our compounds, the carbon atoms are connected to each other continuously, one direction. Looking at these carbon atoms, right, we can see that one, two, three carbon atoms are attached to each other. One, two, Three. But on the center carbon, on the center carbon, we have a next carbon atom. So both compounds have been four carbons, but are they arranged the same? As you can see, they are not. And if you remember how we name our compounds. Alright, let's put on our hydrogens. Four carbons in a straight line, that is butane.
remember, if you don't remember what I told him, the bank Alkins, Alkins in general, look at the videos on naming Alkins. So we see that three carbons are in our chain here. So if it's three carbon, we know it's propane. And remember, once you have a CH3 group, that is not a part of the chain, it is attached to the chain that is called methyl. So this is methyl propane. And it is attached to the second carbon. So that is 2 methyl propane. Let's check up the hydrogens. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have 10 hydrogens and we have 1, 2, 3. Four carbons, C4, H10. One, two, three, four carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So both compounds have the same amount of carbons and the same amount of hydrogen. That means both of them have the same molecular formula, C4, H10. But obviously, one of the compounds is butane and the next compound is 2 methyl propane. So both of them are isomers. They are isomers because both of them have the same molecular formula. But as you can see, their structural formula is different. That means how the atoms are actually arranged in the molecule is different. In butane, the carbon, all the carbons are connected to each other in one chain. But in propane, one, two, three carbons are connected to each other. And then a the next one is on the middle carbon. So both of them are arranged differently. So these two compounds are isomers. Now what you should know, one, two, Students love to change the shape of the molecule and think they have an isomer. Just because you change the whole shape doesn't mean you have an isomer. And I already explained this earlier in an earlier video. <coughs> Changing the shape of the chain does not give you an isomer. You have to break the chain. You have to take off a carbon and place it somewhere else. Now, remember, when you're naming the alkanes, you identify the longest continuous chain. This carbon is not an N carbon. Remember that as well. For you to be the N carbon, you must be only attached to one other carbon. If you look at this carbon atom, this is a line, right? This is a one. This carbon is bonded to this one. And it is also bonded to this carbon. If you are bonded to two carbon, you cannot be at the end. You are between two carbons. If you look at this carbon over there, it is only attached to this one. That's one. So this is one end of your molecule. So this carbon here, that's one end of your molecule. This carbon here is only attached to this one. So this is the next end of your molecule. So if you had used the four carbons and draw a structure like this, you have to identify the ends of the molecule first. This is one end, this is one end. This carbon here, it is forming a bond with this carbon and this carbon. So it is between these two carbons, it cannot be an end carbon. It looks like it is at the end of here, but you have to see the chain continues, it comes down. So what you have to do? Come properly. So, if this is one end of the chain and this is the next end, just draw lines connecting both ends of the chain. So, when you reach here, you have to come down. Remember, this is the end. Good. So, you start from one end, go to the next end. You realize that all of the car, all of the four carbon atoms, are in the same chain. So one, two, three, four, that means this is butane. Let's look at this. I like the two carbons at the end. 
this carbon here is one end. This is not the end carbon because it is attached to this carbon here and this one. So this cannot be the end. So you cannot say one, two, three is propane. That is incorrect. It's one, two, three, four. This carbon is not the end. So this is not a methyl group. Remember, it's a methyl only when it is attached to the, the chain. So this right here is not a chain. This is the end carbon, not this one. That means your chain it must start at this carbon and end with this carbon. It must start at this carbon and end with this carbon. So again, all of the four carbons are within your chain. The chain it does not have to be straight. Good? For all the molecule, for all the carbon atoms to be in the chain, it does not have to be straight. As long as they are attached to each other, one going continuously. So obviously this is not straight, but all of the carbon atoms are attached to each other in one continuous direction. From here to here to here to here. None of them were pulled apart and stick on somewhere else. The same goes for this. One, two, three, when you reach here, the chain is bent. Good? It did not disconnect, meaning this carbon is still up attached to this one. It was not pulled apart and attached somewhere else. So not because it bent, meaning different from this. All of them are continuing in one direction. One, two, three, four. That means this is still butane. So when, when it comes for you to draw the isomers, just because you change the shape of the molecule, because the, if you look at the, the, the definition, it says the arrangement of the atoms in the molecule are different. Good? Now students here, arrangement is different, and they do this. So when they do it like this, this arrangement is different from this. Remember, you have to think of the molecule in 3D. If I turn it like this, good, what you are doing is you do one like this. So, so this is what you will tend to do. So we have the four carbon atoms here. So both molecules are looking like each other. Then you flip this. So this is like this now, and this is like this. And you say, this is an isomer. This is not an isomer. One, two, three, four carbon atoms. There's nothing different. This carbon is connected to this carbon, connected to this, connected to this. It's the same thing here. So you will change, so you, all, I, all I did was flip one of them up. Nothing changed. Good? So you will change in the shape, does not give an isomer. If you want an isomer, if you want, so you have the four carbon atoms. If you want an isomer, you have to break the chain. So four carbon atoms are here, you have to take off one of them. Good. Now, when you take off one of the carbon atoms, do not go to the next end of the molecule and put it there. Because you will still have one, two, three, four carbons. When you are doing isomers, if you want an isomer, the first thing you must do is break your chain. So you have four carbon atoms, you are breaking the chain. So the longest chain must now have three carbon atoms. So the compound, it says C4. So the first one I draw, it must have four carbon atoms. If you want an isomer, a different arrangement, your next chain must have three carbon atoms. Good? Now, the fourth carbon atom must make the arrangement different. The, the connection must be different. So probably you should change from using arrangement and use the word connection. 
so the connection must be different. So when you are turning the molecule up or down anywhere, the connection is the same. All you are doing is changing the arrangement. One up, in one instance it's up, in the next instance it's down. But the connection is still the same. So to get the isomer change is the connection. So once I break it of one, immediately our chain just has three carbons. How am I going to get a different arrangement from this one? If I put it at this end, what do I have? One, two, three, four carbons. It's no different from this because it's still four connected, four connected. If I want a different connection, I place it in the carbon in the middle. When I put it in the middle, you cannot say one, two, three and come back and come. This has four. This is the chain, one, two, three. Three carbon is in the chain now. This one is attached to the middle carbon. Now the connection is different because you have three carbons in the chain and one carbon attached to the middle carbon. So now, this carbon, this chain has four carbons in it. One, two, three, four. So if you are going to name it, Remember you identify the parent chain, so it has in four carbons, that is butane. Where is the longest chain in this? Four carbon atoms. If you go across, it only has in three carbon atoms. So immediately, it's no longer butane because the chain has in one, two, three carbons, that is propane. What is this here? Remember, we have to put on our hydrogens. So, let me put on the hydrogen just here. A carbon with three hydrogen, that's methyl. But the only time it's methyl is when it is attached to the chain. So, these two carbons out here will have three hydrogens. But again, they are not methyl, they are a part of a chain. So, one, two, three carbon makes it propane. This CH3 group here is not a part of the chain. As you can see, it is attached to this chain. Good? So it's methyl propane, as I named it earlier. So it is 2 meter propane. So for compound C4H10, it has two isomers butane and 2 meter propane. There you, we cannot get any more isomers with this because there's no more different connection that we can get. It's only four carbons. So if you put, if you break it again and put two, the number of carbon atoms you are going to add is two. So the substituent groups are the side groups, the methyl group, it cannot be the same as a chain. So your chain, your main chain, must always be longer than the side groups. So here the chain had three carbons and the side group was one. If you break if you break this chain again, then the chain would only be left with two carbons and the amount of side carbons you would have to add is two. So it would work because if you should put one here and the next one here. What do we have? Let's put on the hydrogen. So this is CH3, 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 and this would have an H here. Your longest chain comes down. Three carbon, propane, a methyl group, and carbon two. It is still two methyl propane. So for C4H10, it only has two isomers. Butane and 2 methyl propane. Now, if the question asks you for isomers of butane, so there's two ways to ask it. The compound with molecular form is C4H10. If this has two isomers, butane and 2 methyl propane. However, if the question asks you for the isomers of butane, butane, this is butane. 
therefore it only has one isomer, two methyl pentane. So the molecular formula C4H10 has two isomers, butane and two methyl propane. But the compound butane, this is the formula for butane, the structural arrangement. Therefore, this cannot be an isomer for butane because this is butane. So 2 meter propane is the only isomer for butane. Let's go on next one. This time, we are going to do isomers of pentane. So if you want isomers of pentane, the first thing that you should do is draw pentane. So this is pentane. Put on your hydrogens. And the molecular formula for pentane is C5H12. So that is pentane. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now remember the connection. I'm going to use connection instead of arrangement. Because when we say arrangement, all you are doing is changing the shape of the chain. You have to change the connection. Changing the arrangement to make it look like this, that's not an isomer. All the carbons are connected to each other. So just like here. All I did was change the shape. You have to change the connection. So the, the carbons, if let's look at, look at it like this. I'm going to number the carbons. And you can do it this way until you understand the problem well enough. Let's number the carbons 1 to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Look at the connection, not the shape. Look at the connection in this molecule and the connection in this one. Now, if you look the shape, it looks different. But if you check the connection, it's the same connection. Carbon 1 is attached to carbon 2. Carbon 2 is attached to carbon 3. Carbon 3 is attached to carbon 4. Carbon 3 is attached to carbon 4. Carbon 4 is attached to carbon 5. Carbon 4 is attached to carbon 5. So you might draw a different shape and think of an isomer, but the, but the connection is the same. If the connection is the same, you don't have an isomer. Because as you can see, the name will also be the same if you name it properly. Because the chain will have one, two, three, four, five carbon, which will make it pentane. So what I'm going to do is number the carbon atoms. In the, the first structure I draw, number the carbon atoms. And in the new structure, number them again. If they are connected to each other the same way, it doesn't matter how the compound look, it's not an isomer. As you can see here, this was just a straight chain going across. Right? But this one, it went across, it came down, then went across again. Now obviously, these two shapes are different. But the connection of the carbon is the same, so it's not an isomer. So if you want to get a different connection, you have to break the chain. You have to take off a carbon atom. So the main, so the, long, the longest chain has in five carbons. If you break the chain, so this is not an isomer. So if you break the chain, let's take off this carbon atom at, at the end. So if you take off carbon five from the chain, then we are left with what? Carbon one to four. So we have carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, and carbon four. 
So carbon five now is a one the new structure. Take off carbon five, but do not put it back on carbon four. If you do it like that, the connection is the same. Even though you shift it from pointing that way to up, it's the same thing. Next thing, do not put it on carbon one. So when you break a carbon from the end, do not go over to the extreme end and put it back there. The reason being, let's look. If you highlight the chain, you still have one, two, three, four, five carbon. So when you break off a carbon from the end, do not go to the extreme end of the to the other side of the molecule and attach it here. So don't put it on carbon. Yeah. So you take it from carbon four, do not come to the end and put it on carbon one. Put it on a carbon, listen to this part carefully. Put it on a carbon atom that is between two other carbon atoms. So we're going to, when you break off carbon five, the carbon at the end, we are going to place it on a carbon atom that is between two other carbon atoms. So we can place it on carbon two because carbon two is between carbon one and carbon three. We can also put it on carbon three because carbon three is between carbon two and carbon four. So we can place it on a carbon atom that is between two other carbon atoms. As you can see, carbons four and carbon one is at the end of the molecule. So they are not between two carbon atoms. So you cannot put it on carbon four or carbon one. So let's put the carbon five that we take off, let's say we put it on carbon 2. So this now, remember our chain has in four carbons, so the parent name changes when it's four carbon, it is called butane. Carbon 5 is a methyl group, remember by now you must know how to put on the hydrogens. This carbon would have three hydrogen, so CH3 makes it methyl. So you can put on the hydrogens. Well, you must always put on your hydrogen. You see, you will lose marks on the exam. So a CH3 group, so carbon 5, we take it from, remove it from being on carbon 4, place it on carbon 2. So we now have 2 methyl butane. So that's the next isomer. Once the name is different, it's an isomer. But you have to ensure that you name it properly. So 2 methyl butane and pentane. Now, what you can do if you want the next isomer, if you have enough carbon atoms, you can move the methyl group, move the methyl group to a next carbon atom. So it's on carbon 2 here. You can shift it and move it to carbon 3. So let's grab up four carbon atoms and put the methyl group on carbon 3. Remember, whether it's pointing up or down, it's still on carbon 3. So it doesn't matter. So is this an isomer? Let us name it. Obviously, it looks different from this one. But if you name the compound properly, what will we get? Four carbons, it is butane. Obviously, we have a methyl group attached, so it is methyl butane. But how are we supposed to count? Count so that the subsequent group gets the lowest number possible. If you count from this direction, one, two, three, it is three methyl butane. But if you count from this direction, it is two methyl butane. So both of these compounds are the same. So when you draw pentane, you can draw either of these compounds. 
not both of them. This is not an isomer of this. So if you draw a two meter duty like this, then this one is not an isomer. Both of these are the same compound. But comparing them to pentane, they are isomers of pentane. But you have to pick one structure. Because as you see, the name is the same. Good? So pentane and two meter butane, those are isomers. No. Because you have moved the carbon atom, so you move the methyl group, but you get back the same name. It means that you have to go and pack again now and remove an next carbon from the end of the chain. So, our chain, currently we are at 2 methyl butane. So the chain has in 4 carbons. So if we take off a next carbon at the end, if we take off that, how many carbons are left in the chain? We have 3 carbons. So 1, 2, 3 carbons. Right? That means these 2 carbons now, must go somewhere. So the, these three carbons is the chain. And remember we said when you're going to uh, when you break up the carbon and you're going to attach it, it must go on a carbon that is between two other carbons. Now if this is the chain, then this is the only carbon that is between two carbons. Therefore, these two carbons must go on this carbon. Now you cannot attach it like this. Good? Because this one is not touching the metal carbon. Both of them must be touching the metal carbon. So one goes up top and one goes below. So now our land is changed in three carbons, that is propane. We have two groups that are attached to the chain. Both of them are methyl groups. And remember, when you have two or more of the same substituents, we use prefixes. So when it's two, we use di. So it is dimethyl propane. And we have to tell where it is. Both of them are in carbon two. So it is two, two dimethyl propane. Remember, you use a comma to separate the numbers and a dash to separate the numbers and the words. Now, if you should break off the next carbon of the chain, that means your main chain would have two carbons and the amount of substituents would make a total of three. Your substituent cannot be longer than the main chain, so that is where we end. Remember up here, our main chain was four carbons. When we take out this one, the main chain had three carbons and the branch was two. So the main chain was still longer than the branch. If you try to take off the next carbon, then your main chain would have two carbons and the branches would have three. So that cannot work. Your main chain must always have more carbons than the amount of them being substituents. Now the question was isomers of pentane. How many isomers of pentane do we have? One, which is two meter butane, and two, which is two two diameter propane. So let me make it clear, pentane has two isomers. C5, H12, the molecular formula C5H12 has three isomers. So isomers of C5H12 are pentane, 2 meter butane, and 2 to 10 meter propane. Over pentane now has two isomers because this is the structure of pentane. So the isomers of this are 2 meter butane and 2 to diamethyl propane.
let's try uh, one more quick thing. Uh, where is this? Let's do X thing. So X thing. So the G has so, so C5 H1, that would be 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 5, and then we took out one of them, so you are left with 4. So the carbon 2 and the next one now. So those are the SMOs for painting, and you can put on your hydrogens. At the end of every line, you put the hydrogen. Those are the cheap as the most fucking thing. So for hexane, hexane is C6, H14. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. First thing you do is just gel the 6 of them. Then you take 1 from the end. So you chain, so this is hexane. So you gel the 6 of them. C6, H14, just gel the 6 carbons in one line. That's it. Then you take one from the end. Remember we are changing the we are changing the connection. So now the Langley's chain should have five carbons. And the carbon you take off, you place it on a carbon that is between two other carbons. So the longest chain is five carbons, so that is pentane. And it's a metal group, so it is two meter pentane. Now you can move this carbon to carbon 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you shift this from carbon 2 to carbon 3, you will get 3 methyl pentane. When you come from the left hand side or the right hand side, it will still be on carbon 3. Because what are we going to? This carbon is carbon 3. However, if you shift it to this carbon, this will take it, cut it from this direction, it will again be 2 meter pentane. Good? So, point to 3 meter pentane, again, it's time to take the next one from the end of the molecule. So now, your chain has 4 carbon atoms. And remember, always put the carbons that on carbon atom that is between two other carbon atoms. So the new chain now has one, two, three, four carbon atoms. We can put one here and we can put one on this because this carbon atom is between two other carbon atoms. So now if your main chain has four carbon atoms, that is butane, and we have a metal group on carbons 2 and carbon 3, so that is 2, 3, dimethyl butane. Now we can do our next one. You can put both of the metal groups on the same carbon. So, one, two, three, four. We can put both of the metal groups on the same carbon. So now we would get two, two, dimethyl, butane. And remember, put on your hydrogen atoms all the, all the time. So at the end of the line, I just put on your hydrogen atoms. Now, the longest chain at the moment is 1, 2, 3, 4. If you remove the next carbon, the longest chain will have 3 carbons and the number of carbon atoms form and substitute will also be 3. I remember I said, your main chain must always have more carbons than the 
number of carbon atoms formed in the side chains are the substituents. So three and three would not work. So for hexane, so C6H14 does one, two, three, four isomers. And hexane now would have, oh, let's do this one. This is two, this is three, this is four, and this is five. So C6H14 has a total of five isomers. But if it was hexane, we would have to ignore this one. So hexane would have four isomers. And that's it for isomerizing. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section. In our next video, we will look at the reactions of alkanes.